For thousands of years, the Cree and Dene people of the Athabasca River in northern Alberta have watched as the tarry sands along their banks oozed into the river and stuck to their feet. It was once used to waterproof their canoes. In the 1960s, the First Nations Reserve of Fort Mackay, situated 63 kilometers north of Fort McMurray in the heart of the boreal forest, had no roads connecting it to the rest of Canada. Living in shacks and with no running water, they survived from a traditional economy of hunting, trapping and foraging. But as 83-year-old elder Zachary Powder says, it's not like it used to be. Everything has changed. Today the world's largest oil extraction project, the Athabasca oil sands, has grown to surround them. Where trappers cabins once stood are now toxic tailings ponds and endless moonscapes that have been stripped of their bitumen lace sand with electric shovels five stories high. The Athabasca oil sands are the second largest oil reserves on earth next to Saudi Arabia. With the futility of resistance evident and a growing economy to tap into, Fort Mackay eventually decided to partner with industry. Entrepreneurial endeavors, employment and industry compensations have provided economic prosperity the likes of which few Canadian First Nations have experienced. As one elder and former Syncrude electrician said, sometimes you have to sleep with the devil. I began my four-month journey in Fort Mackay in November of 2011. I was drawn here on a photographic journey exploring the hypocrisy of the Canadian identity. Our First Nations people have a historic, cultural and spiritual connection to the land, a relationship of stewardship and respect. As a nation we have adopted this identity as part of our own but our actions often tell a different story, and our land too frequently serves simply as an infinite field of raw materials. In a community that prospers on the oil sands, I wasn't sure how I'd be perceived as an outsider asking questions. Yet I was welcomed by a family, and it didn't take long for the stories to flow, and the true complexities of a community that had seemingly sold out come to light. Fort Mackay is trapped between two incompatible worlds. A culture and history bound to the land, now living within an economy where the destruction of that land is paramount. Stories of moose hunts and life in the bush are told with vigor and pride, yet stories from the job site are often told in a similar way. With the industry's rapid expansion, the land that sustained their ancestors succumbs, and a way of life is threatened. The rivers are polluted, and fish are often found with deformities or tumors. Carcinogens are in the tap water, the animals keep their distance, and the quality of their meat is in question. Cancer, respiratory disease, miscarriage, skin rashes, and other illnesses plague the community. People work to provide for their families, yet with demanding shift work schedules, their children are often raised on Xbox and frozen food. And with accessibility to the land disturbed, the community struggles to pass their cultural traditions to the next generation. In a country where the norm for native reserves is high poverty, unemployment and dismal housing, Fort Mackay is marketed as a success story. But the people here know the truth is much more complicated. And as their land and culture deteriorate, there is little faith much will remain for future generations. <laughs> 